to you guys, barefaced and ready to read you some more Reddit stories. It's OMG Mondays, everyone. So, today I actually have a theme. Oh my god, yeah, I have a theme for you guys today. So, I have a family troubles theme for you guys today. I have malicious compliance, drew off my chest, am I the a-hole, all kinds of different stories, and I am so excited for you guys to listen while I read them to you guys. So, I have a couple of stories. I have about like four. Let's see how far we can go. I have a couple long ones, a couple short ones, a good little bunch of them. So, without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and let's get started. Alright, so let's, I have my list right here, so I'm going to be reading them from my laptop right here. So, just sit back, relax, and listen. So, let's see. Ooh, this one is nice and juicy, and it's kind of short too. So, let's get started. So, this is, like, I realize that this one is... Let me see. Oh, yeah. It is from A-I-T-A-H. So, A-I-T-A-H is a, like, a subgenre of Am I the A-hole posts from that Reddit. Like, it's not from that Reddit. But, but you can, like, post different things on there. But it's very much the same kind of stories on here. But they have a little bit more, less restrictions on it. It says interpersonal stuff. So, here is this one. Am I the a-hole for refusing my parents their grandchildren because they killed my cat? Well, off the bat, I would say no, but let's see and find out. So, I, 26F, moved to a new state about a year ago to live with my husband, 24 male. When we were moving me down, I had a cat named Kylo. Oh, that's sweet. Cutest little tuxedo cat. Oh my god. With the personality to follow, I had to house Kylo with my parents until my husband and I could afford to bring him home. I had a few cats pass away from being outdoor cats. Shy from a hit and run. Ashley from a nasty neighbor poisoning her. And Pumpkin running away. I have some thoughts about outdoor cats, but I will leave those for the end. When I dropped Kylo off to my parents, I explicitly told them to keep Kylo inside and that he was strictly an indoor cat. They agreed when I initially dropped them off, but after moving down, I'd get some messages saying, oh, but he's curious. He just wants to see. Side note, my parents own three dogs and keep the back door open a full time. I constantly told them, no, Kylo is an indoor cat, but keep him inside. I begged and begged them to respect my decision. With my cat, and I had thought they had, I received a phone call from my father saying that Kylo was hit by a car and killed today, September 17th, 2023. Um... If you're watching the actual video and not just listening, you can see my face. I am upset. <sighs> In the midst of sobbing and yelling at my dad, I, I told you to keep him inside. My dad said, oh stop, it's just a cat. You never say that to a pet owner. Never. Never. Imagine if that was your dog. And you said, oh, it's just a dog. You would get mad too. So. <sighs> so I promptly hung up with him and immediately called my best friend, 26F. After a good cry and stern talking, my husband and I decided to keep my parents from watching their grandchildren without us there. No matter the circumstances, if they can't respect my one wish with my cat, what if, is, what is to the say they will respect my wishes with my children. So am I the a-hole for not allowing my parents the chance to babysit their grandchildren? Absolutely, like, not, to, I would just, like, not be able, not visiting them at all. So, for anyone who has been watching my videos for just a little bit now over the summer, I have recently been lost a long-time pet of mine. His name was Roscoe. He 
was a pit bull. He was about like 12 years old and he died from sickness and he didn't die from like being outside but he has gone out like once and we were so afraid of him getting like running away not being able to find him and stuff like that and I was like I still am very much mourning the situation because like I still think about like oh like coming up like this is gonna be the first Christmas without him like you think about all the things you're not gonna be able to see him like do with you guys anymore and like like I feel like any pet owners in like my comment sections and stuff will know having a pet especially for that especially for like as long as I've had him for like I've had him for like he was like a puppy when I got him like all the way back in like 2011 and losing like a pet like that just hits you really hard and especially like in this situation I'm not saying my situation is similar but obviously this girl has neglectful parents I'll just say that they are, their parents are neglectful and losing a pet because your parents are like oh he's just curious like it's not gonna hurt him now let me tell you let me go on a little rant for you guys about outdoor cats so number one cats cannot be outdoors without either them getting hurt or hurting someone else or something else like if you guys haven't read any like studies or anything a lot of bird populations die like not go extinct but get the numbers drop because of the amount of stray cats in the area because stray cats kill birds because they have to eat and these people who have outdoor cats i don't care that you say like oh he's good he doesn't run away like are much more agile than dogs like yes like dogs are more better for outside like my other dog t-bell that's her name she and roscoe were both in like outdoor dogs they were perfectly fine outdoors and now that roscoe has passed t-bell has been becoming a indoor dog but we've had some problems with using the bathroom in the house so she's partly indoor partly outdoor and we kind of figured out a balance over the summer about like oh we'll leave her out during like sometimes of the day at least we take her out like once or twice a day to make sure she uses the bathroom and stuff and she can stay inside like she is pretty well like mannered to do that but she's had some accidents inside the house a couple of times but outdoor cats cats are more free like they are more like oh go with the flow go go with god type of people type of animals and when you have a cat that goes outside it can climb the fence it can go anywhere without them watching like if you can only bring them outside if they are closely supervised and in a closed area so when a cat goes out it'll get multiple other cats pregnant or um you or they'll kill a bunch of birds especially if you live in an area where birds are like protected or something like that so keep your cats inside especially like and also just cars especially in the u.s where we're like extremely car centric car like cats will get killed by cars end up like roadkill like a squirrel or a raccoon so yeah this woman has had her fair share of cats that died because they've been outside either fed poison by a neighbor that one that one really sucked i i don't know why anyone would do that getting hit by a car and then one just generally running away it probably died 
I unfortunately did have a cat at one point. My mom had a cat named No Name that they've had for a long time. Well, not for a long time, they had for like a little bit. We brought them to the new house that we brought and they just kind of ran away. Like they didn't assimilate well to the like living environment of the new house. So they ran away, which was unfortunate. And they probably died probably a little bit after. So yeah, like keep your pets like safely secure, especially cats. Keep them inside and spay new to your pets. So yeah, obviously, like we've gone far past the point, but obviously this woman is not the a-hole for like not trusting her parents. Like you've lost that trust, especially these people have three dogs. I thought they out like I didn't read the story, but I thought that one of the dogs was gonna maul the cat. I thought one of them was gonna eat Kylo, but no, obviously not. But no, you are not the a hole for losing trust in your parents because they were being negligent. All right, so this one, this one looks good. I read this one, and this one is like this one's good. So. This one is from Malicious Compliance, and it's, it is titled, I Refuse to Cook and Chilled with Men. Chilled with Men is in air quotes, or in quotations. So, let's um, get started with the reading. I, female, 28, dislike cooking. Don't get me wrong, I cooked for survival, but it's not something I like or enjoy. Fair. Like, that's a fair thing. Like, some people like certain things to do around the house. Before marriage, I was treated as a guest. Oh, no. I read... <laughs> I read the line wrong. And my in-laws, both my mother-in-law and sister-in-law, are stay-at-home partners and love to cook. Neither of their husbands lift a finger to help, and they like it that way. Okay. Before marriage, I was treated as a guest, but since my marriage six months ago, they expect, want, and demand I cook with them. First few times, I went along with it, but I hated it. It took five to seven hours to make food and do dishes. So when they planned to get a uh, get-together last week and discuss the menu, I suggested ordering in. This way, everyone could be more relaxed. They looked like I insulted them. I told them they could cook, but to give me a list of what I should make. I will buy it. They said that's not how tradition works and if I hate it so much, I can relax with men. That's exactly what I did, much to their anger. I helped setting place and serving, so I helped um, set the table, but that was it. As we were eating, my husband commented on how good something tasted. Mother-in-law immediately went on about how I wouldn't be cooking anything for him. When he said he can cook for himself, sister-in-law chimed in with how her husband or dad never had to cook a day in their life. How marrying lazy women like me has ruined his manhood. Girl. I looked at my husband and we both left. It Mother-in-law and sister-in-law are blasting her phones over my arrogance and calling him spineless. Even my mom is taking their side now. But guess who don't care? You girl. You girl. You did it, girl. So, I like to cook. I do. I am very much self-sufficient. I know how to cook. I know how to clean. I know how to do laundry and George and chores and stuff. Some may see that untraditional because I do look kind of masculine presenting sometimes. And, um, my dad knows how to cook. Me, well, he doesn't do a lot of cleaning, but, like, let me talk to you about something. This isn't the 1950s anymore. People can choose how they want to live in their house. It isn't where the man is the breadwinner and the women, all they do is just cook and clean and stuff like that. If that's how you want to live your life, you obviously can do that. But, for obviously, this woman and her husband, they obviously don't do that. The husband cooks for both of them. And maybe, like, I can't, I don't know this woman's life, but maybe she does other chores. So, yeah, this is probably, like, more evenly distributed 
but I don't know. She hasn't explained much. Let me see. Let me look at this. Um. Oh, she is also posted on Am I the A hole as well? So, um, I don't want to read that one, but, um, um, it's, looking at it, it is basically the same thing. So, yeah, I have a few of her comments, so let's look at them. Is it, the first comment says, in my opinion, you should learn to cook and love it, and should your husband. We both know how to cook. That cook food that we like to eat. We don't cook elaborate stuff to get hours by choice. You can't sacrifice helping making a meal for your husband's family. It feels like common courtesy to offer his mother, to be honest. To be honest, it seems like you don't care a little too much. It's mild inconvenience, so you shouldn't have to. You get to. It's an opportunity to bless someone with a pretty small investment and effort. If y'all split the work, good compromise could be a potluck. I offer to help bring dishes they assigned to me or watch me want me to cook it myself is over the top. So yeah. You can't force someone to do something that they don't like. Obviously this person knows how to cook what they want, but they aren't gonna cook elaborate meals of a bunch of stuff. So yeah, I would say this commenter is being like, um, you should do it. You should be blessed to do it for them. And I'm like, if she, if Miss Girl doesn't want to do it, she doesn't have to do it. Like, she doesn't have to cook. And the whole, like, spineless comments from the mother-in-law and sister-in-law is just like, this man has a spine to say, like, oh, I cook. It's just like, what freaking the heck is manhood? What the heck is manhood? I never understood that. Like, manhood has changed throughout times. It's all changing. It's just like, I hate this whole thing about manhood and stuff. <sighs> just thinking about manhood, thinks me about a story about my dad and my dog, Roscoe. But I don't want to get into it because it'll get me annoyed. Oh, so... I think I'm going to have to cut this short because my phone says it's on 15% and I need to finish, I need to not have my phone die while I record this video. Maybe I'll do a part two next week. Yes, I will definitely do a part two for next week. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and follow the Instagram down in the doobly doo. Well, without further ado, hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you guys have a nice and safe day. Bye!